I swear, if any one of you tits asks me what program I use in this video, I will personally find where you live and brand the logo into both of your ass cheeks. So as many of you know, minus the couple of people who have asked me in previous videos and either got told I used Microsoft Paint Pro or got Rickrolled in 2019, I use Photoshop for my drawings. I've gotten quite a few questions about some of the tools I use in Photoshop and how I tend to go about my work. There were such an overwhelming amount of questions about so many different things that it would take an entire video to summarize most of them. My segues are flawless and you can't tell me otherwise. So today, I'm going to explain some of the tools and tricks I use to make my overall experience of drawing in Photoshop not only go faster, but also more enjoyable. Because nothing is more aggravating than a drawing program that won't bend to your will! When I first started using Photoshop, I hated the program. I found it chunky, hard to understand, and easy to mess up on. So my first suggestion is a simple one. Switch from the essential setup to the painting setup. This will help a lot. The painting setup has windows for digital art rather than photo manipulation, with a navigator window, layer window, brushes, and swatches tab. I personally have a slightly different setup, but it's heavily based off of the painting one, with the only real modification being that I added a color toolbar where the brushes were and still are. I would also suggest, if you have a drawing monitor and you're right-handed, have the tool windows on the right side, and if you're left handed, have the tool windows on the left side. That way, when you're changing layers or working in the navigator window, your arm isn't covering up the entire screen and you'll be able to view your canvas. The first thing that I really disliked about Photoshop was the massive amounts of jitter that I got from the program. This was because I was using a smaller, less precise tablet for the longest time. And because of that, it actually got pretty unbearable. But there is a solution for this. It's called Lazy Nazumai Pro. And holy Jesus, I cannot recommend this enough. It's such a useful tool. Lazy Nazumai Pro is a stabilization plugin that is compatible with most art programs that are on a PC. It has tons of functions, not only for stabilization, there are also tools for circles, perspective, and many more that I've lost count of. For me though, I tend to use the stabilization settings for massive and subtle for the most part, and mostly use other functions occasionally. All you need to do to get Lazy Nazumai Pro set up is to open the plugin, press hook window, and hover over the canvas until it locks. Simple. Even though it does cost money, it's not that much. Only $15 per year, and they update the plugin constantly. It's probably one of the best purchases I've ever made, and I cannot recommend them enough. Uh, this isn't a paid endorsement for Lazy Nazumai, by the way. <laughs> In all honesty, they'd probably pay me not to endorse them. When beginning with a new program, one of the first things you should always do is learn the shortcut keys. Having to go over and click the tool manually every couple of seconds will impede workflow pretty quickly. Whereas, if you memorize the keyboard shortcuts, the tool changes almost instantaneous. You find the shortcut key by hovering over the tool till a secondary window pops up. This will normally show you the shortcut on it, or if there even is a shortcut key for that tool. If the tool you use doesn't have a keyboard shortcut, or you don't like the shortcut it has, you can go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and change them yourself. Another useful tip for shortcut keys is actually something physical you can buy. An RGB keyboard is extremely useful for highlighting keys that have shortcuts attached to them. By doing so, you don't have to spend time searching the keyboard for the right buttons to press. Instead, they're already highlighted and easy to find. Yo, bro, that's a sick RGB keyboard. What do you use it for? Playing some of them epic games? Um, drawing furries? That's gross. I think a good thing to do now is go over some of the tools that are most commonly used in Photoshop. The shortcuts will be highlighting the bottom left corner of the screen alongside them. Here we go! The first one I'm going to talk about is the Move tool. This one's pretty self-explanatory and is useful for moving objects around quickly without much effort. Another use for this tool is, depending on where you click on the canvas, you will be able to find whatever layer you just clicked on. This is really useful for not having to sift through the layer tree, and it's a pretty recent one that I found and I'm kind of hitting myself over for not finding it earlier. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is the Transform tool. This is dead useful for resizing and editing composition. The Transform tool, coupled with a couple of the tools that I'm going to show you next, can be extremely powerful in making your composition that much better. Speaking of next tools, the Lasso tool is great for selecting certain objects and snippets on the layer you're currently working on, allowing you to either paint or transform specific sections of the image. 
When getting to complex shapes and areas that may be too tedious to lasso, we use the wand tool. The wand tool allows for us to select certain areas that we want to modify and allows us to have more precision when doing so. I most commonly use the wand tool when coloring and shading my art. And for shading, I use the wand tool and the lasso tool in tandem to come up with some very interesting looking designs. The rotate tool is a great way of being able to draw lines in positions that you're not normally able to do. This is basically the digital version of being able to twist your paper. When coming up with backgrounds, I tend to use the gradient tool. This allows me to pick colors that get the general idea of how the background would look. It's also good for eyes and for other simply shaded parts of an art piece. Now each of these tools are great by themselves, but when you really land a power punch is when you use them all together. For example, I'll use the gradient tool on eyes as part of the shading, which they then go over with the lasso tool and then use another gradient tool to make more shading. And being able to use all these tools in unison are what really pack the most punch. So I would definitely suggest experimenting around with all the ones I've suggested. So I've been holding off about talking about brushes and erasers a bit because on a surface level, they tend to be pretty simple. Brush puts stuff down, eraser takes stuff off. But there is a lot you can go into detail about these two tools and I will only scratch the surface of it in this video. The first thing that we need to talk about is the numerous amount of brushes that are available in Photoshop. Even with just the default brushes, you have more than you will probably ever mess with. Choosing different brushes for different things is great, like being able to allow a certain brush to be transparent for sketching, or have a hard brush for line work, and a softer brush for shading. The same goes for erasing, and there are almost limitless options for all of these. For quickly changing the brush, right click on the mouse or tablet pen to open up a window where you click. You can quickly change brush, edit the size, shape, and hardness. So I've never actually used the hardness settings. I honestly have no idea what they do. I just felt like I needed to be granular. If you want to make your own brushes or edit them more heavily, you can do so in the brush settings tab where you can edit things like spacing, which determines how far apart each brush indent is, minimum diameter, which can be found in the shapes dynamics tab and is pretty self-explanatory, transfer, which is a really useful tool for shading and sketching and that I use constantly, and many more that I could go into detail with. But honestly, I would suggest just experimenting with them. Finagle with the brushes, destroy your settings, crash Photoshop. And then when you're done having your fun, you can save your brushes by by using the little new page icon at the bottom right corner of the brush settings tab. I personally have made and used my own custom brushes for my art, and I figured now is a better time than any to finally get around to sharing them, considering a lot of you have been asking for them for like the past year now, and I've just been too complacent to share them. I have compiled all the brushes that I use on a constant basis, and they are linked in the description down below. So come see the spectacular new brush set that imaginatively and imaginative came up with, with such spectacular names like Pencil Light and Comic Liner and TUK1, or the one and only, I honestly don't know what to name this, but here you go. And one seamless transition later, another really cool tool that I've been using a lot recently is the mirror tool. It can be found when using the brush or eraser tool on the top of the program. I find it great for coming up with quick concepts and simple reflections, though I never really use it too heavily with anything other than ref sheets. Something that's kind of unfortunate about the mirror tool is it's only available in the Creative Cloud version of Photoshop. So if you have anything older than CS6, it's not gonna be available for you. Sometimes there are quick or convoluted methods to coloring, flipping canvas or inverse selecting an area that cannot be easily done with a single shortcut key. This is where something called actions comes into play. Simply click the record action window, do whatever steps are needed to get a specific task done, stop recording, and then map it to a key of your choosing. Normally F2 to F8 are unallocated in Photoshop, so you can normally fill these up with action keys. I personally have mine set to flip the canvas, which is just going up to image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal, fill a selected area, which is select Selecting an area, select, modify, expand, marquee tool, fill, foreground color. Or fill an area that's specifically not selected. Which is selecting an area that you don't want to fill. Select, modify, expand, inverse, which is control shift I, marquee tool, fill, foreground color. If I want you to learn anything from this video, it's honestly this. The action keys are the most useful tool in Photoshop I've learned in the five years of using this program.
This video is a culmination of me using Adobe Photoshop for those five years too. All the trial and error summed up in a simple video so you don't have to scream and bitch at the program like I did. So I hope this video will help you understand Photoshop a little bit more than you used to, and I hope the brushes will help you with your creativity and being able to discover your own brushes as well. And if you have any useful tips that you've learned about Photoshop, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below where they will probably immediately get lost. <laughs> I'm sorry. With college and the never-ending workload of pain and suffering that ensues because of it, I honestly don't know when my next video will be, but I can promise you one thing, there at least will be a next one. Despite fewer videos, I've been trying my best to keep up with streams every Friday at 8 o'clock central time, so if you want to see me draw and do stupid things, then feel free to drop by. So until next time, subscribe, bell thing, and go practice the drawing techniques some weird-ass furry taught you on the internet. <laughs>